Syndicalism is an ideology based on unions. Today, a member of the international workers' world will come on to talk about syndicalism. How do you define syndicalism? Syndicalism is the belief that workers and employers encompass two different classes, and that only through organizing as a class within our workplaces can we liberate ourselves from the employing class. What would your ideal syndicalist world look like, and how would it function mechanically? All industries would be democratically managed by those who worked in them. The industries themselves would be part of a larger federation that could provide input into production, costs, and distribution, so that power is retained locally and from the bottom up. Wages would be abolished such that what everyone produced could be enjoyed by all without fear of ability to pay. Would this involve abolishing the state, or do you believe the government can be used to benefit your ideology? That depends on how you define the term state. In the Marxist sense, yes, the state would need to be done away with for this to be achieved. In lieu of a formal state, various unions that are identified by industry and geography would create the rules dictating production and distribution with democratically elected leaders for each industry that are directly accountable to those right below them. Do you think syndicalism might be adopted within the next 20 years? If you look at the history of syndicalism, it had its peak in the late 19th and early 20th century. This was a time of social upheaval, socialist ideologies were spreading like wildfire, and Marxism had deteriorated into reformist political parties. Many of the industries at that time were low-skill, low-paying, and global migration was increasing. Our current situation is not unlike that of this time period. We're seeing the same internal left wars that occurred then taking place now. Those who want to use the Democratic Party of the Labor Party to win some electoral gains are being trounced at the polls, much like the Social Democrats of the 19th and early 20th centuries, who either lost or, when elected, couldn't implement much of the programs they offered. Meanwhile, the syndicalists are organizing workers in hard-to-organize industries that make up a growing majority of jobs for millennials. So while I don't know what the next two decades hold, I think the combination of our economic plight, global pandemic, and climate change all point to a restructuring that syndicalists can take advantage of when thinking about how to rebuild society from the ashes of the old. Interesting. Is there a nation or group in history that has faithfully applied syndicalism in reality? Yes. During the Spanish Civil War, the CNT, a syndicalist labor union, took control of Barcelona. And restaurant workers, as an example, abolished tips and opened the restaurants to everyone. Formal greetings changed the nature of how workers related to one another. Production continued successfully while the union itself was able to maintain the defense of the city from the nationalists. What method would you choose to implement syndicalism? Syndicalists differentiate themselves from other revolutionary left groups in that our tools for implementing our future society are the downing of our tools and engaging in mass strikes. Direct action on the shop floor educates workers about where their power lies and who their enemies are. As strikes become bigger and bigger, the idea is to have a nationwide or global general strike across all industries. When the capitalist class can no longer profit off of our backs, they'll be forced to meet our demands for worker control of the means of production. How much hierarchy do you see as acceptable? Should there be democratically decided higher-ups? Hierarchies are not in and of themselves bad. It's the process by which they're managed. In a syndicalist union, power is retained closer to the workplace, so that those above can only make decisions if the majority of other workers want that. Typically, the way it works is that workers in a unionized workplace elect a delegate to lead a regional or industrial committee that oversees other industries. Those delegates then elect delegates to a larger committee that acts as executives and make decisions based on the information they're receiving from their regional or industrial committees. However, at each level, all delegates can be recalled immediately if their votes do not align with what the workers in the industry wish. This way, democracy is protected and hierarchies cannot become stale or conservative. This is what Michels writes about when he describes the iron law of oligarchy. Unless there is a culture of subservience to those below with mechanisms to protect that and continuous changes in leadership, the iron law of oligarchy can take hold. What do you think of the more anarchist criticisms of democracy, that it allows for the majority to oppress the minority? For instance, an organization that democratically fires those of a minority race or gender. That's an important criticism and a concern that has to be reconciled prior to any revolution. In the case of racism based on national origin, Workplace organizing can mitigate the xenophobic fears that the employing class use against us. Engaging in direct action alongside others who are not of the same race or gender as us can teach workers that reactionary ideology is a tool of the bosses used to keep us divided amongst ourselves. This is how workers gain a sense of class consciousness. 
through workplace organizing and direct action, with real experiences taking on an immediate threat to their livelihood. The hope is that these actions will reduce racism, sexism, and other oppressive beliefs among the working class, so that the democracy syndicalism would establish isn't itself oppressive toward a minority. In that case, is there anything else you think needs to be reconciled before the revolution? I think that what separates us now in the 21st century from the syndicalists in our 20th century is the imminent threat of global climate change. We need to reconcile our consumption in the first world nations with the dangers it has caused across the global south and the dangers it is still causing today ecologically. It's uncertain whether production can be maintained at current rates after a revolution, even if workers are considerably more equal to one another, given what we're facing environmentally. If we're not inoculated to the belief that capitalism will continue to reward productivity, then it's possible that enough workers will see the old capitalist world as better able to meet the demands after a revolution. Do you have any closing thoughts? I would just add that syndicalism, while it is an ideology, is more practice than it is theory heavy. The ideas for syndicalism are better understood when you're involved in union activity and organizing other workers. I would encourage everyone to check out the industrial workers of the world to learn more about how to organize your workplace. The skills you learn as an organizer are far more valuable than just reading them in theory. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and also leave a comment talking about your ideology and your thoughts on the video. Goodbye.